Okay, Drugs Procedures, Unit 2, Chapter 19. So, when deciding on pharmacologics for seizure control, a lot is going to depend on the type of seizure that the patient is having. So, you know that there are tonic-clonic, there's absence seizures, um, myoclonic, um, the list goes on a little bit. Um, we're also going to look at the patient's previous medical history. What do the diagnostic studies tell us? Um, it's all about the pathologic process that's causing the seizures. Um, seizure from a trauma might be treated differently than an idiopathic type of seizure. As a general rule, um, pharmacolog pharmacologic control of seizure starts with one drug. Um, and we see what kind of control we get with that. They may go through several drugs before finding the right one <clears throat> that controls the, the seizure. Some patients will require multi-drug therapy. So they're going to be on two or more different types of uh, drugs to control their seizures. Most anticonvulsants um, have the potential to cause personality changes, especially in uh, children. So behavior changes and um, changes in attitude need to be discussed, discussed with the healthcare provider. These medications need to be taken at approximately the same time every day uh, in order to maintain uh, blood levels. Um, an alteration, you know, taken in the morning one day, the evening the next day, allows for the blood levels to drop and the patient can have um, breakthrough seizures. Um, benzodiazepines, uh, ben uh, barbiturates can be used for seizure control. We've already discussed those medications, so I'm not going to discuss those. Um, again. Um, the only thing I might add is that those two types of drugs frequently are given IV uh, to stop uh, seizure in, in progress. So the goal of uh, seizure medications or anti-seizure drugs is to suppress the neuronal activity uh, to prevent abnormal or repetitive firing and thus control uh, the seizure. We're going to start with the lowest dose and work up slowly so um, that we can avoid um, side effects while controlling the seizure. Sometimes those side effects prevent an increase in the dose and we may find that we have to change drugs uh, at that time. Um, when adding a second drug, again, the dose will be low and gradually increased, and the initial drug might be decreased as we increase the second um, medication. Seizure medications should never be abruptly stopped. This will cause um, a return of seizure symptoms and the possibility of status epilepticus, which is an uncontrolled seizure after seizure after seizure, which um, can be fatal. Typically, um, patients have to be seizure-free for three years um, before medications for seizures are stopped and then when the decision is made it can take up to 12 weeks to DC that med completely. Um, if seizures return then the meds are resumed. Typically seizure medications work by um, controlling movement of electrolytes or neurotransmitters. Um, 
altering the balance of neurotransmitters. So uh, the three general mechanisms are to control the influx of chloride ions, which can affect GABA. And if you remember that we talked about GABA before, it's an inhibitor inhibitory neurotransmitter that causes sedation of the, of the nervous system. Thus, we um, see the side effect of sedation uh, with a lot of these medications. Uh, they can delay the influx of sodium or calcium. Now, sodium and calcium, uh, these electrolytes, are used in the ner nervous system to uh, cause firing of the nerves. Um, and so, if sodium or calcium moves quickly uh, in that across that synapse, then the nerves fire rapidly. So if we can delay that, um, then the nerves won't fire and we can decrease the, um, the risk of seizure, seizure activity. So benzos and barbiturates, again, I'm not going to talk about those. Um, hydantoins and succinamides we'll talk about and um, a couple of other medications. Hydantoins and, and phenytoin-like drugs, um, phenytoin, also known as Dilantin, uh, phenytoin-like drugs, valproic acid we'll talk about, carbo, uh, carbamazepine. Um, these are work by controlling the influx of sodium. Um, so if we, again, slow the influx of sodium, then we can suppress neuronal activity. Now, they work by delaying that influx of sodium, not blocking it. Blocking the influx of sodium is going to con completely stop neuronal activity. And that is not something that we want to do. Um, so, our goal is to control the seizures without depressing the central nervous system completely um, and without causing dependence or abuse of the medications. Uh, hydantoins and phenytoin-like drugs should be taken with food. Um, they should never be given IM and if given IV they should not be mixed with any other medication in the syringe or in the IV tubing. Uh, this can cause a precipitate to form and um, cause a lot of pain, IM and or um, in the IV or in the vein. Uh, they have a narrow therapeutic range, so that means they need to be monitored closely. So patients will be expected to um, undergo blood work occasionally and this is an important point of teaching that they need to know um, they're going to be expected to follow up occasionally. Adverse effects include gingival hyperplasia so the gums actually overgrow and um, so we want to teach patient good uh, oral hygiene, frequent uh, visits to the to the dentist, um, so again, they need to they need to know about these things. Uh, changes in mental status, uh, like confusion, uh, over sedation, we need to be observant for. Serious adverse reactions include a skin rash. If they develop a skin rash, they need to stop taking the med and contact their healthcare provider immediately. Uh, it can cause hyperglycemia in diabetics. It can cause blood dysgracias, so CBC, um, RBC, morphology needs to be uh, observed. Um, and they are hepatotoxic, so we want to um, observe those things. Uh, nystagmus is a symptom of toxicity, so looking for that vibration of the eyes uh, is an important assessment. Teaching for any anticonvulsant means to, 
needs to include uh, adherence to drug regimen. That's the only way to get uh, control of the seizures. Uh, the succinamides, uh, the mechanism of action is that they block calcium channels, uh, which increases the electrical threshold, um, meaning that it takes more uh, impulse to cause that neuron to fire. So they're not firing just willy-nilly. Uh, side effects include hiccups, epigastric pain, drowsiness, uh, increased bleeding time, and blood dyscrasia. Carbamazepine, uh, also known as Tegretol, that's the, the brand name, uh, affects norepinephrine and dopamine. Uh, it can block the reuptake of norepinephrine and decreases the rate of turnover for, do uh, for dopamine. Um, typically used for generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Can cause renal failure, liver disease, um, and should not be used by patients of Asian uh, descent. And so uh, history is very important uh, with this medication. Uh, common side, of side effects, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness. Uh, it can cause orthostatic hypotension um, more, and it can cause hypertension. Um, patients with uh, congestive heart failure may experience more dyspnea and edema, so not always a good a drug of choice for those patients. Um, blood dyscrasias are also an issue along with the renal and hepatotoxicities. Gabapentin um, is kind of a miscellaneous typically only used in combination with other anticonvulsants. Uh, its mechanism of action is unknown, and so we want to, we, you know, if we just don't know for sure how uh, it works. Should not be taken with antacids. We need to separate that by two hours um, because antacids decrease the absorption of, of gabapentin and could cause breakthrough seizures, even though they seem to be taking the medication appropriately. Side effects are similar to all anticonvulsants. Um, so we're going to see sedation, drowsiness, blurred vision. Um, as with all anticonvulsants, we, we want to get that baseline uh, neuro assessment. You know, what is their alertness? What is their personality, their behaviors? So we can be observing for changes in those things. Um, alcohol should be avoided with all anticonvulsants. Any central nervous system depressant is going to compound the effects of the anticonvulsant, and we're going to see more um, CNS depression. And valproic acid, I don't know why this slide is at the end instead of with uh, the hydantoins, um, but valproic acid has a ten, seems to work by supporting GABA. And remember, GABA is that inhibitory neurotransmitter. Um, we need baseline liver function tests, bleeding time, platelet count, because these things can be affected by valproic acid. It is teratogenic, uh, and so should not be used in pregnancy. And again, similar side effects, sedation, drowsiness, dizziness. Um, for most of these anticonvulsants, you'll see that uh, these common side effects uh, typically will diminish over time and so aren't a huge uh, concern uh, eventually, but they do pose safety risks and so patients need to know about them and we need to do adequate patient teaching uh, initially so that patients are aware that it's going to affect their uh, driving, um, you know, it's one of those, you know, these are a class of drugs that always get that warning, do not drive heavy machinery um, until you know the effects, blah, blah, blah.
because it, it can make them, them drowsy. Um, of course, in most states, there's there are laws that if someone has a seizure, a lot of times they lose their driver's license until they've been seizure-free for a year. Um, and so, you know, that, that, that along with the uh, psychosocial impact of being labeled an epileptic, um, you know, depending on the age of the person, can have a huge impact on their, their life. Um, so that's it for seizure disorders and on to pain control.